The Corn School on RealAgriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. This is Ken Curra, market development agronomist with Pride Seeds, and it's Tuesday, July the 24th. Um, we're getting into that stage of the growing season uh, here around the London area. We're in Thorndale today. In the London area, we're at that point where we can start evaluating our corn crop for yield potential and also having a look at the vegetative growth of soybeans as they head into their their peak three or four weeks here for, for uh, setting pod and producing grain for us. But the corn crop, um, Pretty well documented that we've withstood a pretty severe drought the last four to six weeks for some areas even longer in most uh, corn growing regions of the province save for uh, an area northeast of Chatham around Dresden that seems to have caught a lot of rains through the spring and summer and a couple areas in Essex County that caught rains that that several other areas of the province didn't for the most part the province has been very dry for the last month for sure. And what that uh, has really caused, you know, we've got we've got corn going through pollination like this year right now where the silks are still moist and yellow newly emerged and the pollen is shedding in this field today in this test plot. So that's pollinating as we speak. This is uh, basically May 8th planting date. That's the tail end of the corn planting window this past spring here in 2012 in Ontario in the London area. This here would be corn that was planted in, uh, you know, the April 15th, the 20th window. And uh, to varying degrees of success, as you can see, uh, this was from a field with pretty severe drought pressure. And we have areas where we have, you know, 16 rows by, by 40 kernels long. We have areas that are 12 and 14 rows by 20 kernels long, so 40% of this. So we have a lot of variability in the fields due to drought. The positives, if there are positives to take away from it, is so far in our, in our scouting in the last couple of days, you know, we're, we're past pollination. Our scouting has revealed to us that we do have some pretty good pollination out there. When you look at ears with this potential, there's the odd miss on them, which you usually see, the odd miss pollination. But for the most part, they're pollinated pretty close to the tip. The butt of the cob is good. So we have good pollination, and in the areas that have good yield potential, we have it. So for most corn producers right now, the markets have been really good for the last week. We've got strong markets to sell into. The question becomes, what do you have to sell? And in corn, there's a lot of variability in the fields as this illustrates. And the challenge now is to figure out what areas look like this, what areas have this kind of potential. And that can only be done really by thorough scouting. But the good news to date is pollination appears to have been very good despite the drought stress. I attribute that to really not, you know, we haven't had an extended run of mid 30 degree days. We've had the odd one here and there over the last two weeks, but when we have had those hot days, we've had cooler nights to give the corn a break and respire and, and try to relieve some of that daytime stress. And that's really helped us out here in this area. The other key uh, factor this year, you know, contrasting 2012 to 2011, is uh, root development. In 2011 we had late planting, we were planting into wet soils that largely weren't fit or as fit as we would have liked them to be. We had really limited root development and we had drought pressure in 2011 and it showed up very quickly. As soon as it started to dry we saw pretty severe drought pressure because we didn't have the roots to support the plant. Well we have roots in 2012. We had an early spring, a dry spring, we had a dry June which really encourages good rooting. I severed several roots on the underside of this root mass when I dug this plant up today. But nice big fern roots. I really like how we have so many fibrous smaller root ferns there. There's a lot going on in that root mass. It's picking up whatever moisture it can, fertility that we've supplied. You know, it's doing everything it can to support that plant. And I really think that the drought pressure we've been under had we not planted into ideal conditions, it would be a, a real catastrophe at this point. But for the most part, the crop is hanging in there pretty good, and there are still areas with outstanding potential. The other positive going forward is that our corn plants are very healthy. If you look at our corn plants right now, if you look at the leaves, there's not much disease there at all. There's the odd speck, but they're pretty much perfect 100% green tissue. So those leaves are gonna keep working that photosynthetic engine of the corn plant and driving yield. For growers that have used fungicide in the last two weeks to protect the upper half of that plant, I think they're gonna see some great results heading into the next uh, 
next four to six weeks. Essentially, you know, having reached pollination, we're basically 45 to 55 days away from the finish line, which for corn is black layer at 32%. So the finish line is in sight. We can keep that plant healthy and hopefully Mother Nature provides us with a rain here shortly for the areas that haven't received it in the last week. And uh, we can get some relief from the drought and we can get some good grain fill on the go. And we'll have a crop here in the London area that will certainly be variable, but it will have some highlights and it will have some low lights. So we've observed today on our field scouts that pollination has been very good for the most part. We have a little bit of tip back where the end, the end inch of the cob hasn't, uh, hasn't pollinated. That's not unusual and in fact sometimes that's a hybrid uh, identifier as well, characteristic of the individual hybrid. But overall we're pleased with pollination. Now we can, uh, you know, this is our first opportunity to get a real look at yield potential and start estimating what we have as uh, growers try to figure out what crop uh, size they have to sell into uh, to sell into these strong markets over the last 10 days. These are three pretty representative ears that we picked from some of the better areas of fields that we've walked today. And you do kernel counts in those ears, 14, 16, 18 rows around, and anywhere from 34 to 40 kernels long. So that's pretty nice yield potential. You're, uh, you're exceeding 500 kernels per ear in those cases. A bushel of corn has 90,000 kernels in it. So you can factor in your kernel count per ear from a representative ear or a, a group size, a sample size of representative ears, say 10, out of a given area. Multiply that by your population, let's say 32 to 34,000, and then use the 90,000 kernels per bushel factor, and we can estimate yields. And today in our uh, Pride 300 bushel fields we've been scouting and we've been finding that these fields, even though they're under quite a bit of drought pressure, and visibly that drought pressure is really evident, uh, we're finding that we still have 200 plus bushel yield potential. So we're really happy that this corn crop has weathered six weeks of drought that well. So overall, I think it is as much as the corn looks tough on the roadside, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be a really variable harvest. There is still some very good news in terms of the pollination out there, and with some good rains during grain fill, we can produce a pretty nice corn crop.